But now I'm seven. I mean, this kid is uh, one of the younger players, but definitely, but definitely one of the stronger ones as well. I mean, I've had the pleasure of seeing him in, in different locations, various spots around the world. I believe seen him in East Coast Throwdown, and also recently making a top eight in Fight Kingdom in Seattle. Oh wow! I actually went coast to coast for that. It was an awesome trip. Um, yeah, one corner of the country to the other. Yeah, that was a long flight, but oh, and that was real. So that Dom takes game one there. Oh, here we go. So a little bit more serious time. I mean, very rarely do we see the hitbox in use here on Third Track on this older game, but the Nam, you know, bringing that modern style to the classic game. Yeah, and I like the way he's using the back dash, just getting spaces correctly, getting the max distance on those pokes. But then he gets thrown once again. And oh, what an escape, though. Oh, look at that. Carries him, gets the back forward, gets that juggle state in there. Okay, but doesn't do enough damage. Oh, this is a command grab. Take me, get her out of here. Okay, good, good jump over that EX fireball. Dive kick comes up short, but able to get that third corner carry. Got the Ganage right where we want. Oh, him. this is so tough. All the guesses, you have to react so fast. And the Nam looking very, very strong here. Yeah, you got the shoulder roll, taking care of business here. Good close it on out. I oh, love just, it. Oh, Rackle Star, let's go. <laughs> now you can even hear the guy in the background. Let's go. <laughs> but let's see. I love that as part of the soundtrack. I know, right? but can Regero like get it on? We have to. We have to see. Oh, but this is a great start. Oh, let's go for that safe jump there. Yeah, Perry into that confirm, gets the down toward Fierce. <laughs> you know, just like that. The, just like the Yun action we saw yesterday, Yun it puts him in the corner from one corner, like just like that. That was so quick. Oh, he's the king of the coast to coast. Guys. Yes, <laughs> you know for sure. Got that dive kick switch sides. Oh, doesn't get the connection from the third low short. I think after that low short, you can get that jab in there. But then gets the command grab. Doesn't oh, do enough there. Trying to build that meter. He's trying to get, get the Ganesian. Oh, here we go. Now, uh, I, I'm not exactly a fan of uh, Ganesian from full screen away, but he just needs it to do just enough of the job. Oh, and that's going to take it by the tip of his toes there. Don't you just love supers that juggle after the super? <laughs> I mean, his cousin Jamie got a little bit of go that going on in, uh, in Street Fighter Six, where um, he's able to get the combo after his after his level three uh, super slash critical art or whatever. But is that canon? Are they actually cousins? Yeah, they're related. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. Jamie's uh, related to the twins, Yen and Yang. So, well, Megaro here is gonna have to find his Yin and Yang here because it's not working out here. But it's still possible. We're going three out of five here. And this is loser side. So, you know, once he's out, he's out. So he has to, like, maintain it here. He's got to think of a different game style game plan here to, to find success. Look at that Ganage. Just going clean. Got four hits off of the juggle there. He's gonna, Ken's going to throw him. Miguel is going to throw him back into the love New York poster. Oh, caught him back dashing. Double dragon. That's what I call it. <laughs> oh, boy. And here we go. Ken is in the corner. He's, oh, he's going to have to. Oh, just out of the corner easily. That's good corner pressure there. Oh, gets the a juggle. Air. Yep. Juggle state there, and then spikes him down with the card throw. Yeah, very safe option there. You know, if they just jump back, you know, you can just go for that uppercut, but you also have to watch out for the parry. This is third strike after all. Yeah, we're going to make some corrections here. So the first match was actually a bunch Okay. Check, just to confirm that with the Jackson. Oh, boy. It was a little, it was a little tricky because it, it was probably the most aggressive hype button check I've ever seen I know. in my life. So, I mean, like, and I've seen some good button checks back in the day, so... Okay, and Miguru. And I mean, it's amazing how they're jostling for the corner there. It's looking like two cruiserweights just trying to see who can get on the top rope and land their offense. Again, dive kick comes empty, lands right into the throw. And you know, you don't really see this from many young players so playing a more conservative game plan here. Just, you know, opting to go back, you know, just gain meter full screen. Yeah, and did you see that lunge punch stuffing the fireball of the start up there? <laughs> and then gets a double hit confirm off of the stand jab. Second hit, able to get into that target combo. Empty jump into the parry, got the throw. And you say this is a young kid? That's a, that's old man reflexes right there. Jump into a par low parry, was it? He was ready. Uh, can he do an activation, but he's oh. like, I bet you're going to hit a button, but doesn't get the full connection there. And instead, he gets the full connection. That's four hits. That's five. Down four, Brandhouse. Dive well, kick with the setup. Delayed reaction. Oh, the command throw. That's a good damage. And in the corner, Ken goes. Oh, yeah, out can. of the corner. That command throw is just brutal. Second hit of the chin buster getting there. Stop. Checks him on the dash. Oh, and he's doing such a good job keeping him in the corner. This is, Oh, he's going to find success into the corner. Not going to be enough to kill, but he's got to deny the Ganage in here, Jox. Oh, this is. Oh, you got a parry. Oh, my. Do we got it? Oh, man, the boy. Oh. <clears throat> he was juggling torches there, man. <laughs> My man playing with fire. I mean, and that's one of the optimal setups to get that meaty fireball there going to the super. 
yeah. into the Super Art 3 there, but just able to get that awareness and fully connect with it. You love to see it on point. A great showing by Miguru there, just looking, you know, very strong. Oh, the names are switched? Yeah. Oh, oops, I'm so sorry, guys. Solid air to air there. Who's going to go? Oh, the air parry into the jump there. You only see that in third strike. Oh, oh yeah, that hits on both sides. The cross up? Yeah, the down forward roundhouse. I've the, seen some oh. nasty stuff with the low forward confirmed, but the Canadian got blocked. The on the ground cross up? I'm still, I still can't get over that. Yun's got a lot of tricks up that cap. Up that snapback is a whole lot of Street Fighter specialty that just comes from every which corner of the world. Gets oh, that throw, and that puts the Yun in match point position. Okay, so I'm so sorry for messing up the names there. <laughs> yeah, Miguru, oh. so here we got the stand fierce there. Oh, that would have led us to good corner pressure. Now the Canadian's on deck. Okay, into the corner he goes, and he gets a good setup here. What's he going to go for? Oh, goes for the lows? On point, low short, low jab, low short into the super art three. Does a bit of a frame kill there. And now Yang is looking on as oh, his other brother he, just takes go. care of business. In the corner, eat all this damage and the juggles. Oh, what? the parry! The wake up dragon punch. You want to do that? Okay. It ain't going to save oh. you. Blow parry again with the read into the target combo from the stand strong back. Fierce. Oh, wake up, uppercut. Let's go. The EX and three low shorts to close it out, folks. And you know, this is the first match of the top eight here, but I mean, all is going to be decided right here. We got one more round. Okay, in the corner, Young goes. Yeah, what's going to be from these 99 seconds here? But, you know, it, it hasn't really mattered so far. Oh, okay, I was saying, it hasn't really mattered so far for Yun. He's been such a good job putting Ken in the corner. Yeah, but Ken's got to continue to lower that life. Now, Yun is at, like, 35%. Now, Yun right now is is whiffing some of those low strongs there. And now, Ganajan on deck. Gets okay. that activation on block. Okay, let's see what he can do. How can he Not enter? Now, you oh, tries to go for the command grab, but just barely whiffs. Yeah, oh, man, that was good. That was really good. Really good for me, Here's Ken there. Okay. Oh, what an again. uppercut! Oh, just needs to chip it out, and depending on the parries... And he gets it. So it looks like we are going three out of five here. Okay, so not the, the final straw here. It's still possible. Let's see what changes. Yeah, we'll see how this is. We'll see what adaptations come about. I'm loving the pace of this matchup, too. Yeah. Because what I like is also the situational awareness of using Ken and being able to walk down when that meter isn't full. Because when that meter's full, I mean, it is... It's a danger. It, Young yeah. could activate it on block, off command grab, off hit. Off anything, off any idea. Yeah, I mean, it's now, okay, the Noms can is up 2 1 against Miguru's Young. That's yeah, a correction there. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. So here we go. Let's see what Ken can do. Oh, it just grab in the corner. Yeah, not enough from that grab there. Those knees to the stomach, they only have a limited amount of hits. It's not like it's super turbo. You can mash it on out and get that round. So this is. The non point, he's beginner's gonna activate. He's gonna go straight into Ganagin. Like you said, you know, you pointed out wisely that this Ganagin's got like it's got some well aged movement, situational stuff, yeah. of finding the opening and capitalizing. But now it's a matter of building up that meter before Ken can hit that super art three. Man. That's gonna be what's so critical about this. Look, look, it's the young man uppercuts. Look at look at that. Again, double dive kick there. Does score anything out of it. Happily dashes underneath the EX Tatsu. Now he's got oh two boy. super arts on deck. Oh, but the Canadian's activated. He wakes up, but he's just going to use that as a get off me. Oh, and it trades? Yeah, and he can use the EX fireball drugs. All he needs to do is just get like that simple hit in the air to air. The Nom, the, the stunning prodigy. Just wins it again here. What? That he's should be it, right? Like, is that three? He's shrugging. He's like, I'm going to ready to see some top eight explode. Top eight third strike action. You know why we're here. Oh. <clears throat> oh, Kenny Black versus Dirty Llama. The Dudley versus Makoto. Fist of Cups going on. And Karakusa already sets the tone. Oh, geez. Seven seconds into the set. Seven seconds. And in, we yeah. see our first command grab. That's it. Oh, what? Oh, a little bit of a stagger there. Just going to cold press that Adam's apple. Yeah, but Dirty Llama's got that corner pressure. And he knows what he's doing with the juggles. He's going to get that full connection. Oh. That's going to put... That's going to put... That's going to put Kenny Black in a hard position. It, we, it, you don't really see that, you know, the, the Super R1 with Dudley often, so this could be a little bit of a treat. You know, you usually see... Uh, I forgot the name of it, but this is not definitely not the, the common one to see, but what a treat here. I, I like I like seeing these different super arts here. You know, there's always, like, the, the, some characters, there's only one that people use, but great use here. And some people, yeah. Oh, and that's another reason why many people don't use it. 
That's a good point there. <laughs> Target combo, nobody home, goes into the corner. Got ourselves a whiff dash there. Okay, into the corner, machine gun punches. Dirty Llama takes the first one. Dirty. Sucio. Man, and that, that, that's the only thing. I don't thing. know how to say Llama in Spanish, do you know? El Llama, I, I'm not sure, but man, I'm actually trying to apply to do Spanish commentary, and I can't say Llama in Spanish, so. I, I don't know. There's I mean, that. <laughs> I mean, but we're gonna we're gonna have to find the English word here for victory because uh, Cannon Black is down one game here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Makoto has home field advantage. Let's see what she can do. Now I gotta say, going back to soundtrack discussion, this is actually my favorite. I'm telling you, it's so good. Yeah, the Makoto's track is fire. I thought you said Elena's was the one that you liked. Oh no, no, it was yeah. Makoto's is really good. Oh, it's Makoto's. Yeah, to me, it's, to me, it's the best. We're in total agreement, man. We usually are. I mean, I mean, with Elena, I mean, do, do we really want to hear bees in her hair? Two sweeps. Yeah, there we go. The kiss from a rose. Oh boy, let's see, let's see some seal in action. <laughs> People still think that song's from Batman Forever, but it's actually from the Never Ending Story Three. Oh boy. Oh boy. And here we go. Dudley finds a way to get in, man. These are just two fast-acting characters on screen, but... Yeah, they got great jumping offense as well, but one thing to really watch out for is the cross-under oh. and that neutral jump. Debate on all Dirty Llama needs to do is just get that little scoop up in there. I got my dipping dots. I'm gonna throw you right to the edge of the dojo. Man, it's just like he's in his head. He's just presenting that the everything. He's, he's going under. And that dash under again, just getting that side switch because that forward dash is so oppressive. Oh, Man, man, that's confirm. the thing. When Dudley has you down, it's it's such a hard thing to do. You have to guess up or down, left, right, north, south, east, west. Wumbo, you know that? Oh, for sure. And then there goes that low high overhead off the low forward into that, which creates the knockdown there. That's an excellent round from Ken and Black. I mean, we saw how he was dashing, crossing under. Got a lot of that corner pressure there. But Dirty Llama could still put it on. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can get Dirty Llama in neutral. You can just manipulate your certain way because you're just trying to play that denial game. Okay, let's see. Oh, gets the, gets the crouching, the crouching around us. It's so weird to see that. <laughs> yeah, and able to continue. Took a few steps there. Got a few uh, oranges shaking from the tree. Gets him into the corner. Target combo misses. Nobody home there on the low. That lets Ken and Black back dash away. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be where it puts him in the blender there. And it's a messy blender, Jocks. It's like the kind of blender where you got some, like, ice cubes that just won't melt stuck in the blender. So oh, it goes <laughs> Definitely not a ninja blender, that's for Yeah, sure. that's what happens when you're in the range from where Makoto can low forward uh, punch you or either Karakusa you. Oh, Dudley with no cross up here, acting a little tough. Man, this is going to be a very hard comeback. Yeah, I'm loving the low profiles from Kevin Black. Oh, and dash and throw is enough to take it here. Yeah, it was Ken and Black's round to lose there, and he's able to tie it up there 1-1. One, one. So are we going to see the, 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 the special art changer from Dudley? Let's see. That's a good call. You know, that, that's interesting to see. I mean, because I know that it performs suboptimally, as we saw earlier in the match. So let's see if that strategy plays about. But, I mean, yeah, I it's mean, two rounds to decide. So he, he, we do see a change in the super. Okay, yeah, so we do see the change. Okay, so he's going to have that three bars there. It's not going to be as much damage as the other one, but it's definitely easier to land it. Yeah, but he gets that utility, and with the way the yes. Dirty Llama is able to pile on the offense, it just means that option's always going to be on the table close out. Karakusa with the reset of the stand short. Able to oh, boy. And the stun is racking up, and there it is. He's seeing stars. Air-to-air -air parry leads to that juggle. Just great situational awareness from Ken and Black. But the yeah, jump back Black isn't... with the jump back. Yeah, jump back enough to take it there. But, yeah, like I said, these are two characters that could stun you very quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, facing the wrong way is Makoto. But let's see what you can do. Yeah, which way did he go, George? And we're going to find out here. That's a mix-up. Uses the stand strong to kind of feint some, some, some movement there. Dudley jumps in, eats a stand roundhouse. I love the stand roundhouse. It's anti-air. Great confirm. Will it? Yes, it does. And this is a great... Great damage. Saitrusa Gudanzuki in action. Oh, but like I said, this is a hard comeback to make, mm -hmm. and he just eats that heavy button. Makoto with the advantage on pokes, and using that to open the distance to close in with that dash. That was that was just really, really clean by Cannon Black with, a come, with pretty much what you could argue is a comeback victory there. Yeah, 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 he's down a game. But is there such thing as a comeback? I mean, in this game, it's not as often. It's not seen as often. I mean... No, I mean, like, if a Makoto player is able to do that, <laughs> do you consider that a comeback? 
No, that's just a Makoto round to me. It's like a Street Fighter Five player commenting G's comeback. It's like, no, you just did your job. Yeah, you just did your you job. You just did your job, but I'm loving the movement there that we saw, and that was just really awesome. Shout-outs to Dirty Llama. I mean, really got some good situations and loadouts there and, and confirms with the mm-hmm. Dudley. But, again, just when you saw your, the, what the, the, what the Karakusa can do, to, as Phoenix Wright says, just flip the whole case upside down. <laughs> you know that moment where Phoenix Wright solves the case, but you haven't? So you're just trying to put together the evidence and let Phoenix do the brilliance? <laughs> That's some of the stuff that happens with Makoto there when you're nailing with those resets and able to, to, again, get in that position where you're teasing the command grab, but it just means that you could just loop on and pile on more pressure. Let's get you over to the next match now. This is going to be interesting. we got some old heads up in here. So we got the legendary Justin Wong, the defending champion also, here at Jabali Land last year, holding it down. He won a lot of hardware last year at CEO, and the way he showed it up at, at, at Third Strike and, and really pulled it off was great. Now he's going up against um, Michigan from Miami, transplant here, Everdread, and that means that there is a Remy in the top eight, folks. Did oh. you see that coming? Did no, you see I, I we'd did. have a Remy in top eight Jabali Land? No, I did not. Yeah, make some noise for that, y'all. Okay, but now interesting story here about Everdread. He's been since he's been in Miami, he's been playing almost every day over at Arcade Odyssey, where there is a rotation on the cabinet of about ten to twelve people on a given night. Really? Yeah, and he's developed a lot of good players. But Justin Wong with the back fears to the house, optimal damage, going to take the first round. But yeah, some of the players even that finished like ninth and 16th mm-hmm. were actually some of the people that have been playing in the arcade, like playing with Everdread and a lot of some of the other up-and-coming third strike talent. So nice. great to see Everdread making it into the top eight. Um, honestly, and what he's done for Street Fighter Three Third Strike in oh. South Florida is, is very notable and commendable. And one of the the, the more rare confirms here from Remy. There's, yeah, a, he, there's a actually really oh, good Oh, he video. missed it. Yeah, he missed the drop off that throw, and I know he's flustered by that. He's like, oh, if anyone wanted to get that, he can get the flash kick after that throw. It creates a jungle state. You know, I keep forgetting that this is actually a character in this game. You very rarely see just like you're right? saying. I know, but he's a thing. Like, this is a guy who gets 40 win streaks at the arcade, but Jay Wong takes it to the house. And yeah, this is not just any guy you see in the arcade game either. This is definitely America's best player in this game and many other games. Well, for sure. I mean, I'm talking all this stuff about how this guy has made, myself included, a much better third strike player. And then some of the other people who finished between 16 and 9 who nearly made it into the top eight. I mean, who got gate kept out here, but. I mean, when you have your own. And then Jay Wong's like, hey, it's me, Justin. When, when, I'm the problem, it's me. When, when you have your own booth at CEO, you know you're doing something right. That's right, that's right. Now, yeah, that, that dive kick of Remy is very interesting to deal with, but Justin responding correctly with the stand fierce. And, you know, Remy's not a character that has really many confirms or, you know, opportunities to convert, but he, uh, yeah, Everdred's right. really showing some here. Yeah, Everdred knows exactly where he can get those extra flash kicks to come out, and, I mean, and he can use other supers, too. Like, we've seen him play with Super Art 3, that's the counter one, and the way he used it, instead of, oh, Super Jump canceled by Justin Wong! Oh, nobody home because... Yeah, Everdread was already airborne on that one, so even though Justin Wong got the tough confirm off that close standing roundhouse kick, which leads to Super Jump cancel to Super, Everdread was able to get one on the board. And the dive kick. You see the dive kick Everdread does? Keeps it real low, real close to the ground, makes it harder to predict the parry on it. But you, you gotta deal with the, that damage comparison that Chun-Li has. Oh, baited. Oh, yeah. It, exactly what you're saying. You gotta deal with that damage. That damage output is just, it's favoring Wong in a big way. Yes. Okay, and there, oh man, this is, this is tough. Oh, gets the parry there on that one. Yeah, Everdread switches the intensity of that diving kick. So you're going to see him be able to kind of stay unpredictable, but I'm telling you, Jay Wong, hi, it's me. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and here's the scary part. You know, when, when Sean is the character has one bar, as long as she has that one bar, that's a lot of damage. That's potentially... In her, in, her, in her case there. Yeah, that's just great situational awareness of seeing like where the openings are and how Justin Wong can respond. I mean, we do. there are some uh, some decent Remy's over on the West Coast as well in the United States, and you see them once in a while. I mean, they get a few points over in the Jazzy circuit, so Justin's pretty familiar with with what he's got his hands full there. And what a confirm, like clockwork. And just like that, Jay Wong moves into winner's finals here. And you know, we were talking about experience, but, you know, J- J- Justin Wong has been one of the best. I know he's been the best player in the country, you know, basically for forever since the game's life. Oh, the numbers are on his side. I mean, yeah, the yeah, metal yeah. count you, you, is definitely on his side. I mean, it's very easily. safe. You could probably compare him to Michael Phelps. 
Oh boy! It, oh it, boy! Because he wins all, like he just gets all the medals. You know, I'm just saying because of that. He's oh a boy. Cool dude. Yeah, and just like Michael Phelps, he's swimming his way further into the bracket here. Hey, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah and um, you know, even though like Jay Wong's been playing since the beginning, you could you, you could still catch him you know, on his YouTube channel. He still plays the game. He still plays on fighting. Oh, he's he grinding plays, on it. Yeah. yeah, he still plays the old game. So he's definitely well versed. He's not just picking this up once a year type of thing so and his youtube replays are great i mean love the personality he puts on it kind of how so much is meme worthy yeah and everything because in the fgc like we love that type of content like i grew up on excellent adventures so <laughs> which is and, and it's kind of been revived a bit with uh with mike ross and sean doing their own thing now yeah. but that was one of those things <clears throat> just my favorite kind of content to follow justin wong's content on youtube is always endlessly entertaining and you know he, he brings things out of there so over here, we got Big Bad Wolf, and he is going to be going up against Ricky. So, again, both very historical players. These guys have got dec uh, Hugo? over a decade yes. and some change of some third strike <laughs> experience and excellence. I know that Big Bad Wolf also made the top eight a combo breaker um, a month ago recently, so congrats to that. And his Dudley, his Abigail definitely... Are does we, work, and we are we are, we're going to do this. Uh, yes, this is great because as a Street Fighter Four fan, I love this matchup. I love the mirror in Street Fighter Four. I love it maybe equally as much in Third Strike. We'll see. Yeah, Ricky versus Big Bad Wolf. So Big Bad Wolf is going to be the Broly looking Hugo. Is that the correct assessment? We'll see. And he starts it off with a yeah. The character has seen a little bit bleach. Oh boy, Ricky having a great story. Oh, he was looking for that back break where he's almost on stun. Yeah, Ricky gets the clap, and then the hammer frenzy to confirm and close it out. Both players using that super art three. It confirms, gets damage. Yeah, it's, it's you know, compared to a lot of other games with grapplers, they don't really have a strong, you know, hit super, and Hugo's definitely one of the few to have a good one. Yeah, indeed, but, you know, I'm, I'm always a fan of the butt. Yeah. I it, mean, like, I just... I love that button, that down forwards roundhouse, and here we just got an exchange. Yes, great character awareness there. Yeah, yeah SPD on SPD, got the parry and knew exactly what to do. Spins the stick, oh, but in response. Yeah, he was, try he was trying to parry an anti air there, but nothing was to be had. Yeah, Big Bad Wolf gets the hammer friendly, ends it with the clap, safe jump from there, goes low, nobody there. Oh, can Ricky take this back? Wake up, super! Oh, and the Has to parry! Got him! Oh, we are loving those multi parries because we know when people got to dig deep for survival over in Jabali land and pull out that greatness from within. 1 0 on Ricky. Big and he, Bad Wolf. He's huffing and he's puffing. He's looking. He's like, I got to make an adaptation. Well, Jox, what do you think he's going to do? Well, I don't know. I was just going to say, like, this is a character, yeah, definitely. Compared to others, you have to be a little bit better with parries because of how big you are. A lot of things only hit you in certain situations. So your parry game has to be better than average here you gotta come correct and ricky gets off to a great start there and the dangerous part is in this mirror match you know you're thinking oh yeah this character you know the, these guys are both good at pairing but you know that, that command grab it changes everything now you're facing the character that has your same tools it's gonna make it a little bit tougher here and it's what it should be oh and there's that argentinian backbreaker just lex lugers him out of the air it's an empty jump Ooh. splat not gonna kill big bad wolf on to a great start Yes, an excellent round from the raven-haired Hugo. Oh, Big Bad Wolf, low strong there, and takes it one away from tying it. Yeah, just great words. You don't really see many Hugo players really anti-air well with, with the backbreaker. But it's a great choice. You know, you can't really parry it. So if you're able to react within time, it's a great option. What I love here is oh that little dog wagon there and how it covers up your low forwards there, how it's, and it moves around randomly. So you can get some deceptive buttons in there. We're seeing it come into play. <laughs> the dog. I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, you, can, right. you can hide your feet behind the dog. Like, there's some things in Third Strike that do that. Like, for instance, at Chun-Li's level, there's a table. And so, like, <laughs> Chun-Li mirrors, like, you'll see them hide their legs underneath the table to kind of sneak a super hard oh, two. Boys. Oh, and that drop kick. Big Bad Wolf has adapted, taken to the skies, taps into his little inner Randy Orton, and he's <laughs> able to go a little airborne and take it. Loving that adaptation. You know, something else that's pretty cool, neat about Hugo is that he's a grappler with lots of overhead options. Mm. You know, he's got the Including fierce. my favorite one, the butt. The butt. and uh, <laughs> The Stan Fierce, one of my favorite buttons. I mean, yo, know, I was there, Evo 2015, when Alex Valle did that to Banshee in USF4. That was hype. Yeah, that was, that that was, was a good one. 
That was an incredible moment. One of my proudest moments to watch American players beat Japanese, you know? Okay, Ricky go. gets one back on the map there. No, okay, apologies. Let's see. That's Wolf. let's see what these German characters can do against each other here. Oh, lots of splashes. Oh, the great parries. Oh, and that's going to whip punish there. Yeah, Hammer Friendly, you're sticking a limb out there. Uh-uh, you got to come correct. Oh, empty jump. Empty jump command throw is so strong in this game, in the game of parries. He tries to wake up with the Hammer Friendly, and he's just bolted, making a beeline for the exit, and that puts Big Bad Wolf over in the match point position there. That's just excellent chase down in rounds here. I mean, the last three rounds of Big Bad Wolf, he, he's had the Yomi on point. He's had just the right things, making that adaptation. Oh, Perry. Perry again. Caught it. Caught oh, two he of missed them. the last oh. one. That was so crucial. Yeah, everything but the clap. He just had no room for applause there whatsoever on the stage. Ricky's pushing him back. The Broly looking Hugo. Got oh, the splat. Reverse, <laughs> reversal command throw working out. Yeah, low Perry, but that reach came out colder than the other side of the pillow. The Lariat misses. Nobody home. <laughs> and look at this mind game with the sweeps here. Just great on great reach. And we're just throwing out haymakers out there like it's an old school heavyweight classic. Will this one hit? No, it doesn't. Big Bad Wolf making another beeline out there. Did you jump regular throw just to keep it safe? Gets a big body slam. Ricky's like, I can do the drop kick too. He just stays a little airborne to avoid the command grab. I don't know what Big Bad Wolf was doing taking over to the sky, but Ricky able to put it down. Now we got 99 <laughs> seconds to decide which Hugo survives here. One last round, Jabali Lamb. Let's go. Yeah. The the only seven foot character in this game. Let's see what he could do. Yeah, this time, the first two hits of that hammer frenzy able to connect and do a respectable amount of damage. But Ricky taking him into the corner gets that clap. This is where it gets dangerous. Yeah, this is where it definitely it's a very scary, very scary times here to be the, in, in this match. Oh, big bad wolf got the chur churn the right butter, able to tur whip that cream into something salty. Oh, blocks the clap out there. Caught him running. Nope. Yeah, he's on the ground. Yeah, trying to get that beat squasher going. The first time we've seen it in the step. Not working. Oh, oh that's time so, to confirm. It's going to be so clutch. Hammer frenzy. And it's in one the guess. clutch. Oh, one guess. One guess. Oh, no. He tried to take to the skies. And Ricky with the high-flying body splash able to close out an amazing heavyweight affair to kick out the top eight. We got handshakes and love, but, I mean, I just want to ask, are you not entertained? <laughs> that's why I'm here, man. I am here to watch air moves stomp out anti-air moves. <laughs> <laughs> because it's third strike, baby. If only if only he had the the, the Street Fighter 4 version, the EX version that has invincibility. To me, it's one of the best anti-airs. But I, I love that anti-air. It's a good I one. I mean, it's like instant. He's just like, splat! Like and, that. And just, but in, in this version, you definitely... It's a little, there's a little bit of risk. There's no invincibility, so you definitely get hit out of there's it. There's a little risk. I mean, honestly, the C6 and the C7 vertebrate were just out of the radar of that <laughs> hitbox. Just nobody home. I mean, he's trying to grab. He's trying to splash. It's just a messy situation there, and Ricky was able to escape. But honestly, honestly, Jock's like, that Hugo mirror could have gone on first to ten. Yeah. And I would have been the happiest camper ever. Yeah. Like, that, I would have survived just on one Red Bull. Instead of it, <laughs> it's, it's a good one. And, you know, this is a game that, you know, the, the top tiers are really, like, separated from like some of the middle tiers and low low right you know right a lot of people like talking about oh it's the strength of the character but it's the strength of the player but it, it does matter in a sense here and so like this game at the higher levels you know you see probably about four or five characters so to see some of those other characters it's always a treat and just like you saw we saw the hugo mirror and we saw the remy we saw the remy yeah, yeah and we saw we see a lot of very interesting things come to play i mean a hugo mirror and a remy here in the top eight you love to see it you're, you're not this isn't, you, you would think, you know, the third strike will probably have three Youngs and a Yang and then two Chun Lees and, and, and two Kens. Yeah, exactly, and two Kens. But no, no, we got that character variance because exactly as you pointed out too, what makes Street Fighter Three Third Strike such a beautiful game is it's a great place to be a character specialist. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you could say the top, th I mean, we there's a universally agreed upon top three, which is Ken, Yun, and Chun Li. Yeah. But. I mean, like, there's people who can hit those Chun-Li confirms that can go low forward super and do everything by the book. But what's more dangerous is the kind of people who know how to play around it and know the ins and outs of their character, that they're really able to make something special, original, and create a lot of situational. A lot of the situational on top of the situational. Like, and that type of evolution is what <clears throat> is what makes Third Strike such a beautiful game. And when you see it from all these flow hitboxes, like from Elena, from Yun, from... from Yang, who's actually one of my favorite characters to use as well. 
it's beautiful to see. But unfortunately, we're probably not going to see like a 12 or a neck well, roll on top eight yet. But they can do some fun stuff too. You never know. The bracket is still young here, so lots of things to happen. We are still going to see Remy, right? He, he, yeah. he just got knocked into losers. We are going to see some Hugo still, but we're still waiting here. I'm, I'm very curious. I've never seen Remy and Hugo in the tournament match. Well, it, there's a good possibility you might see that today. I mean, I know you're holding on to your hats for that. <laughs> yeah, as, I like, mean, as, that's a, as a Hugo enthusiast, I always I, I love the big potato man, man. It, it's just it's a it's a very exciting character, very crowd pleasing character. You know, because like I said, it's a character you have to have the parries to do well with him and. Some great parries were shown here today already. We're only oh, going to I mean, see more. Some of the Hugos you've seen like <clears throat> across overseas over in the Cooperation Cup. Yeah, YSB and um, YSB. Oh, God. I could watch why I could watch a whole thirty-minute video of YSB's parries. And what is the other one? I forgot his name. Uh, he's like a really eccentric guy. Like uh, I don't know why is oh, the only one coming. I up. forgot it's, his name, but he's like really exciting to watch. Indeed. Just like the matches we're going to have here today. Let's see. So there you can see, folks. Jay Wong versus Ricky is going to be winners' finals, and then we have Big Bad Wolf versus Ken and Black. That's going to be fun. That's going to be a grappling matchup with Hugo and Makoto. The matchup I really want to see is Everdread versus the Knob, because the age difference between the two <laughs> players. I mean, you're going near like triple age here. So, seeing where because when when this kid was born, Everdread was over playing in Chinatown Fair, and over in. Um, over, over the years, because I know this because he always shows his classic footage of, like, Third Strike videos that shows, like, the Third Strike community, and you see him just grinding it out on the cabinets, like, back in, like, 2004, 2003, like, when when the likes of Daigo or Mago would, would come in and visit. So he's, he's definitely had his fight against the rest of them, against the best of them. But what I'm also excited about is this winner's final here, which is Jay Wong versus Ricky. So how – but unfortunately, like – Chun-Li and Hugo is a bit of a mess. Yeah. And what I believe, and some Chun-Li players have told me, uh, notably Cookie, one of my favorite Chun-Li's, also pointed out that this is the type of matchup in particular where uh, uh, it's beneficial for Chun-Li to use Super Art 1. Yes. Because you may not have that many opportunities to close the gap to confirm in a Super Art 2, but Super Art 1, unless you have YSB's parries, yeah. which, like... Super R1 can really shut down a lot of Hugo's approaches. Yeah, and I'm not trying to show his YouTube, but there's a great. Uh, you see a lot of that on Justin Wong's channel. Oh, and yeah, he, he always has a challenge that you're not going to parry all of us. And I don't think anybody, like, he's maybe had one person, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's a hard one. You got to eat it. For sure. And let us know in the chat what your favorite parry sequence is. Like, what I mean, like, those kind of situations where it's like, oh, he's. He really needs to parry to survive, and you see some brilliant stuff happening. My favorite is when you got 12 super where he flaps his arms around like that, and it's like you have to parry one side, and then you got to parry the other side of it. And oh, I've wow. Seen, yeah, I've seen that kind of jank stuff happen there, which just adds more love to the third strike. So here we got Big Bad Wolf, who came so close to the winner's final, so yeah. close with that Hugo matchup that went down to the wire, down to the last grab jocks, and he is, yes, indeed, going up. Against Ken and Black's Makoto. Yeah, there's going to be grabs. There's going to be parries. Grabs. And there's going to be somebody going home sad here. There's going to be robbery, too. I mean, these, these are two of the characters that definitely could flip an entire match on its head and just take it over out of the game. Oh, okay. And there we go. Big Bad Wolf using that super art one. The 720. Let's see if we can see any of that in this game. I like that decision there. Yes. Because it's going to make Ken and Black's Makoto think twice about the approach. Yes. Because all it takes is one mistake. Yeah, all, it's all high, it takes is just one bad guess. Highest damage super in the game, so something to watch out for. Watch out for for sure. I'm losing words here, just watching these oh, two. Oh, how did he whiff that? Yeah, I know. I think he just used the heavy version, so he just had a little bit less range. And it's, it's so crazy, that situation where... You're just stuck, and then the command grab just completely whips, and the other opponent does do it. Yeah. Yeah, one thing that's going to make this matchup a little tricky, and Big Bad Wolf taking the first round there, beautiful, beautiful Hugo play, and you see the smile on Ken's Black, Ken and Black's face here. You understand here. One of the things about this situation that makes it tricky is that there are these moments where Makoto can land a poke, but if she confirms... Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Boom. The walk up 720? Walk up 720. Puts him in the sin spin cycle permanent press. Oh, nearing that perfect, but that jump back roundhouse takes it. 
I didn't think we were going to see that today. Yeah, especially this early going air to air, just good stuff, building up those fences and keeping that Makoto out there. Big Bad Wolf taking one up there. <laughs> what I wanted to point out, though, is that it's problematic when there's these specific ranges where Makoto could land these special cancelable pokes mm -hmm. from these specific areas that if you special cancel in them, it may whip or get blocked and put you in a really bad place where you do not want to be with Yugo. You don't want to smell that breath. You know, you don't want to... No. You don't want to stare at those steel-toed boots there. Okay, here we go into game two here. Big Bad Wolf with the advantage. Yeah, brilliant start from Big Bad Wolf. Oh, whips the Karakusa. Tried to go for the reset there with the meat squasher. Nobody home. Oh, man. Perry, seven, Perry 360, rather. Man, we can already count how many SPDs he's landed in this short set. I think he's going to go for empty jump SPD there. Oh, just a little bit out of range of the meat squasher. He really wants that meat squasher. Yeah, he and does. I don't blame him. I don't blame him because get that Makoto in the corner. You know, nothing wrong with that. And that sweep, you know. Oh, is this going to kill? It's Almost. Close. I forget. Hugo has that seven-foot person health. Who, who, what? what happened? Who what that? happened? Oh, he's oh! still standing. Big Bad Wolf blew that house down. <laughs> And he's still got the structure to take it. Puts it in match point to advance to loser semis. Jocks! Man, we got full screen trades? How about that? Oh, he tried to climb. He's like, no, hold your applause. I got some. No! But he's going to grab him on and out of sequence. Oh, and he's churning the potatoes here. He's like, Ken in black, I got yo back. Whips the command grab there. Ken in black escapes. Oh, he's got to scramble there. The axe kick comes up short. This time the tree wins. Uh-oh. Here's the start of something. Oh, beautiful juggle there. Takes him down to 50%. Got that axe in the right place. And Kenny Black got that max super one for one. That St. John goes on Zuki. Oh, oh. Can't change it. Will it? This will kill. Yes, it will, baby. I called my shot. Okay. There you go. You wow, can see he turned around. You can see Ken and Black reeling there, getting a a little bit of a reprieve there. Okay, he's got around. He's still in this. Yeah, he's feeling it. He's feeling the flow, feeling the rhythm. This is his opportunity to turn this around. He needs to get this one. This is like Apollo Creed yelling, there's no tomorrow in Rocky Three. Okay, let's see what we'll kill. Oh, oh, the command grab. He tried to punish command grab with the command grab. Nobody happening there. Dashes in again. Oh, this time he got him in the corner with it too. Oh boy, this is a lot of damage. Dash up. Oh, just walks up, okay. Yeah, avoids that clap at all costs. Pair kicks there, meat squasher, nobody there. He's over for three that's on the meat squasher. Is that gonna be, oh, that's, a, anything is gonna chip out. Oh, okay. Yeah, he just needs to get those boots on the ground to take it, yeah. <laughs> Big Bad Wolf, what a showing there. Yeah, what a showing for sure. And guys, if you wanted more Hugo, there you have it. We want more Hugo. Who wants more Hugo? Let us know. But also at the same time, way to bounce back from a difficult victory, from a difficult defeat there against Ricky that we saw earlier in the yeah, winner's yeah. semifinals. So able to bounce back there, hold on to the defensive play, and just able to just get those on-point interruptions against that Makoto. Yeah. That's what makes Third Strike such a beautiful game. A walk up 720, okay. I see you. Oh, I've seen him do those in a lot of places, man. Ken, yeah. Ken and Black is definitely one of the one of the really hype Hugos that is able to just really turn situations over and play the right way with this character. Yeah, and you know these guys, they, you can tell they're well versed right now. They don't look rusty. You know, some people they, they come in, they play, you know, they go to their majors, they play this game two or three times a year. You can tell these people have been playing. Oh yeah. I mean, there there is certain degrees. Third strike is one of the most loved. Street Fighter titles in the series, like we say, the artwork, the hand-drawn sprites, the supers, the godlike music, the all right, that's cool. I mean, you got debatably one of the best announcers in all of video games as well. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just, you have these class of players who have dedicated themselves purely to making thirds, like being great and getting everything you can out of the third strike engine. Yeah. And when you see that level of mastery, it goes beyond neutral footsies. And anything you know in the handbook and understanding of fighting games, you are creating your own art form, and you are both the sculptor in stone. And I think the really neat thing, and it's, it's not just this CEO, and I've seen it in the past CEOs with this game, there's quite a bit of the younger generation getting into this game. You know, they're placing. You know, it's showing that they're, they're having this interest in the older game. Right. They're putting the time in it. That, to me, that's, that's pretty special. Right. And in this case, you got the Nam 7, who is younger than the Daigo Perry. Wow. Facts. Wow, that's 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 um, quite a statement. Uh, that's a lot to put myself through. Wow, that's uh, made me feel older for sure. I mean, and that's what's going to be coming up. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing, hopefully, in the bracket scene, Everdread against the Nam Seven because that's going to be Gen X against Gen Z. Oh, geez, it is literally that. Jeez, and, all and so you rarely see that kind of matchup being that competitive in a top eight bracket too.
Jeez, Evan had to think that hard about the alphabet since it had SpaghettiOs. But here we are. <laughs> Third strike, folks. That That's uh, – man, what a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you ever spell out words in the soup, too? Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's, like the Goofy ooh. movie. <laughs> I mean, your you mind plays tricks on you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I got to say. Alphabet soup, man. That's a, that's how I felt about Alpha 3. <laughs> <laughs> alphabet I mean, hey, you can never be too old to have alphabet soup. Or, you know, I have a friend that said you're never too old to have the dinosaur oatmeal. So, no. <laughs> dinosaur I mean, egg oatmeal. You're never too old for Capri Sun. In fact, I recently hacked Capri Sun. I, I cut off the top of the pouches and I just, like, gulp it down like that. It's actually it's a great hack. Be sure yeah. to, that's how to drink Capri Sun as an adult. Because as an adult, I don't have like the the capability to put the straw through the pouch. I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. So <laughs> I can't do it at all. So <laughs> indeed. And, and speaking of food and stuff, if you guys are interested, you're going to be here late at night. Um, there are going to be food trucks. I think from like 11 to 1 a.m. Yeah, I checked it out last night. Like I had, uh, it, I had it's a pizza that was amazing. Yeah, and the yeah. Line, you know the line for that wasn't too bad. It was not bad others. at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and they were serving like late at night too. So yeah, it's yeah. like you know when we're when we're in the real Jabali Land <laughs> vampire hours, you know, like we because y'all. I mean, I, I don't know if y'all know this, but like Jabali Land, like people don't know Jabali. I have to explain Jabali Land every year because I've, I've been messing with Jabali Land since uh, CEO 2017. I believe that. No, it was CEO 2015. That was the debut of Jabali Land, and. I mean, like, it just evolved into this really awesome take on the arcade BYOC area yeah. that is really just 24 hours. So, honestly, stay up tonight. Like, if you're in the, J- the Jabalian area, Jabalian on Saturday night after the second day of CEO is one of the most unique, in- <laughs> like, things. And, hey, hey, I'm the guy that parties in the Combo Breaker lobby at 4.30 in the morning. So, you probably didn't get much sleep on Sunday night because of me and my karaoke of Lady Gaga. But... With that said, like, I know a lot of unique, interesting places in the FGC, and Jabali Land is, is always up there, one of my favorites. I love this place. I love this arcade. I love the hype and the energy that, that it comes from. And also, like, the really cool stage out there and how we got these custom candy cabs up there that just putting on that kind of showcase, it just, it just really shows that, that when you go down to the FGC's roots, because I'm the kid in the arcade. You know, we are the last generation of being raised in the arcade. Mm-hmm. And and how it is. So being able to represent that and show some love to that is some of the most beautiful is some of the most beautiful things that I see in all the video games. You know, it's kind of interesting because like, um, like when I go back home to the Philippines, the arcade thing is still there. It's still there. Yeah. Like you go to the malls and there's people lining the arcades playing the old games. And I'm like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna whoop this little kid's butt in X Men versus Street Fighter. And yeah, they have all the combos. They have all the saber tooth stuff. Are they doing the saber tooth roundhouse? Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. Don't dude. tell James Chen about that. Okay, okay. They, these guys have been practicing. That's for sure. I mean, hey, not non sequitur and like another random FGC fact that I have an infinite amount of. Um, it, I love reading James Chen's guide on Street Fighter versus X Men. Go to the section about saber tooth roundhouse kick. <laughs> Go to this, and you, you can see the game. We've got one of the cabinets there. It's like one of the things that just does this downward drop kick that lo- looks like Dr. Doom's foot dive in MDC. Yeah. And, and just go read what James Chen has, has had to say about that button because anything I say about it does not do it justice than what James Chen said about it. Like, it is literally like, I think he describes it as turning your brain off and like <laughs> lobotomizing yourself <laughs> and like just finding a way to win with fighting games with no skill whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a funny. Kid. That was actually who I played too. Not just I didn't know he. I know back in the day, but you know before internet guys, like I didn't know that was a like he was good. It was just a, he was just a funny character to me. But anyways, I'm looking at no, all. He was great. I'm looking and at, you know I can't talk about Street Fighter versus X Men without bragging about how much better the Sega Saturn version is. Oh boy, because it's actual tag team. PlayStation version was not. It was just a player and an assist. Oh. But the Sega Saturn actually a tag team. So one for the Sega Saturn. Okay, yeah. Interesting. You know, I always wondered about that. I always wonder why there's different versions. But anyways, I'm looking here. I'm seeing all the smiles going on, all the faces getting into the cabs. And there, you know, you're and talking- we got head head caps too. By the way, I want to point that out. Yeah, and you're talking about the, you know, the the magic and the special feeling of Jabali Land. There's a lot of people who come here to see you just for Jabali Land. Yeah, me. <laughs> oh, you come. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was here for us of six. But I mean, like, um, I would say, like. Honestly, CEO 2019, 2021, I probably spent 90% of my experience here. And, like, I, this place is the goat, you know? What's even cool, too, is that there's an entire room dedicated to DDR. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so that, um, so oh. that, that is just gnarly there because I just I walked in there, just, you know, revisited the past. But, hey, we're not going to hold you up any longer. We're going to get you to the action here. We're just setting up here. We got a hype winner's final. We know you want it. We want it. Are you excited for it? 
I'm excited, I'm excited for, for it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't be excited enough about it here. So we got Ricky. Ricky, you put on that amazing winter semis, heavyweight bout all the way to the finish there, getting the body splash to beat out that Argentinian backbreaker anti-air, going up against the defending champion, the YouTube master, the man who tells the children, welcome to the real world, the gatekeeper of gatekeepers, the Justin Wong. And look at that. Smiles on the stage already. This is, good. This is going to be a tough oh, one. Oh, he's wiping off his stick. That's old school style there. Getting that, that clot there. So I can get those fingers to slide across those buttons just right. He's got the Broly look too. With Poison rocking the Roxy look. Oh, and out of the corner, Yo Chun has all the privileges in this game. So that's one of them. She has that, that, that wall jump. And the back fears. I mean, it's actually a poke. The range for it in anti-airs. It builds meter. It's going to be a god butt. And, and exactly what I pointed out about this matchup specifically. Do you see what Justin's doing with the super bar? Do you see the super bar? Yes. Super one. He's got Kikosho. So this is one of the matchups where... Oh, he's going to go for it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Those two low strongs too, man. That's some ingenious stuff. Oh. Keeps on jabbing even after the air parry. Justin Wong just calmly takes that one. This is going to be quite a hill, a hill to climb here for Ricky, you know. Three out of five, you, you definitely got to... Oh, no, oh. nobody home. And this time the Hammer Frenzy able to keep the reach. That's going to be about a good 35 HP. Very rare miss there from Justin Wong. Yeah, that was a good safe jump there by Ricky, but Justin was able to have that awareness to mash through it. Takes that spinning pile driver motion and a drop kick to the face. Oh, and the air throw, Justin's always ready for that. Yeah, Justin needed that air throw because that air throw would have gave him stun. And then he uses the, the super jump cancel from the stand roundhouse to escape that. He's going to let that, that, st that stun meter go down a little bit, throw some stand fierces, and even it out. Okay, let's see. No. Oh! The butt, baby! I love it, the <laughs> butt for the KO. It's my favorite butt in the game. Well, you can't spell button without butt, and Ricky's showing there. Exactly, but what I really like, though, what Ricky's doing here is he's got good awareness of that Kikosho. He's able to jump around it, able to maneuver it. He's denied Justin Wong twice of it, and that says a lot when you deny Justin Wong the same super twice in the same round. That's really a testament of a good player and good situational awareness. Oh, missing out there on the SPD is Ricky. Oh, great parry in response there. Oh, look at this, just Ricky inching his way forward. And Justin throwing out a Hazanchu there, just trying to catch him off guard with an overhead. Air throw again. Air throw very useful here. Stan Fierce pushes Ricky into the corner. Yeah, it's a great way to reset the neutral here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Both full meters on deck. I think the Kikosho could close it out. It's pretty close, but... Uh-oh, let's see. Are we going to see this? The is he going to go for the chip out here? Yeah, lots of low-medium punch there. Just Wong able to connect with six of them. In that case, it got blocked. And, I mean, Ricky's just in no range to punish him anyway. Oh, the whiff punishes. We got those. Remember, this is winner's final, so this is a three out of five set. Yeah, it's going to be a three out of five So, Oh, and Ricky. That button's the problem. Ooh. That button <laughs> is the problem. That crouch strong. And you know, Jay Wong was there like, you know, I messed up on the super. I don't need the super to win this mo to win this game. And two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Messed up on the Kikosha, two of them. Now, is Justin going to make that adaptation? Is he going to say, maybe I need to go to Super Art 2. Maybe I need to keep it tried, true, traditional. Or maybe I need to play it to the theory. He's going to stick with the theory. Yeah, he's going to okay. stick with it. If it works, why not? I mean, his low strongs is really what's really been carrying him, using that button there. Because... I don't know if that button is un how unsafe that button is in Third Strike in particular. I know it's mega unsafe in Street Fighter V. In Street Fighter VI, it's also unsafe too because it happens from Serenity Stream. Oh, oh Kikosho was a whip punish. That was a good use of it. Gets, oh. the, gets a pair of low crushes there, and I'm just going to mash out the legs there. And Justin with the character awareness to go over the sweeps. I mean, that's, a, that's one of Hugo's best buns. has such a great range, knocks him down. But when you got that toward roundhouse, which I like to call the Shining Wizard, because it kind of looks like that move, if you ask me. It's one of my favorite wrestling moves. Yeah, Super Jump Cancel, get away. Ricky can't. Oh, that's an easy confirm. One of the few confirms he has into the crit Super Art. Excuse me, wrong tournament here. <laughs> Critical Super Art, I like that. 
we're combining that. That's like, if we play a hybrid there, good anti-air. You see that anti-air with the close standing roundhouse and the jump cancel afterward? That's just amazing situational awareness, because like, I gotta say, Jux, being able to anti-air with a proximity normal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do not miss that. I definitely do not miss that. I mean, it's it's pretty godlike when you're able to time that correctly and get and just have that perfect command of that proximity normal. Oh, Kikosho is a whip punish again. Got him. Oh, this is going to be, oh, we're just about tied in life. But Ricky's going to have to be the one to get in here. Justin's just so good. Oh, with the air throw, he's been so consistent with that. It's like the fourth one he's landed. Okay. So, yeah, J Jay Wong with a strong advantage here. 2 0 here. Yeah, this is a 3 0 set. So, Ricky's got some room to make some improvement, make some changes. I really like how Wal how Justin is using the Kiko show here as a whiff punish. That is just genius. Yeah, it is working out. You know, Hugo has a character. You know, he has kind of slower bunts. They kind of linger for a bit sometimes outside of the claps. Yes. Oh, yeah, that is so true. Ricky's got him in the corner here. I think he's also kind of watching to see if he's going to try to jump out of the corner here. Yeah. Want to keep that spinning bird caged. Oh, trying to go for the meat squasher. No, no meat squashers have been landed on stream so far. Yeah. He got himself in the corner, but he believes the gamble will pay off because he just needs one more hit here. Justin using the full length of the screen. Yeah. Walking it to the other side of the dog on wheels. And just goes for the easy chip out there. You know, if you look at Hugo's size and you look at that parrot, that's actually a monster-sized parrot. I know. <laughs> it's a lot bigger than the one John Tron used to have on his shows. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I also wonder if he has a poster of himself going on there. Whoa, what a parry. Again, to approximately normal anti-air. And now he just casually walks underneath there to switch sides against the throw. It's beautiful. Oh, into the command thread. That's a lot of damage. That is so much. That is like a flex seal commercial full of damage. Pushing him in the corner. Oh, oh great whoa. confirm. A great awareness to use that clap. Not a fast nor, not a fast special to, to be able to get all that damage. Yeah, he doesn't even do much here to close it out. The Kokosho got him so close to the ground. Able to get that reaction at just the last available frame. We got wall jumps. Now, here's the dangerous part. With Hugo, he does have that EX Lariat. that can move him across the screen kind of fast. But it's a huge risk. It is, and it can chip out. <clears throat> The air to air, the try to true. You, you know, you don't want to get too predictable. Yeah. It, you, you give away a parry, and especially with some of the things like Justin Wong's gotten a lot of mileage here in this match with with whiff punishes and really able to get a lot of them here in the winners final. So, but that was a good round by Ricky. Good response there to just be able to kind of zone out and stand his ground here. So it's two one here in the winners final. You know, that's that's a, a very common trait amongst older players is that they don't like to, they don't they're not really fond of taking those risks. They're smart, they're experienced, right? Well, the the, the truth is is that you're gonna lose more tournaments than you win doing some of those things. So I mean if you get away with it, more power to you, man. Seriously, great, great stuff. I wish you the best. But <laughs> <laughs> But let's see here, can Ricky mo maintain the momentum? Okay, so here we go. We do got a special art change by Chun. Oh, and because it's third strike. You can continue the combo and finish your business and still have the stun left over. We're going we're gonna to leave it out there. We're just going to put it in the fridge for leftovers so you can just continue to keep on eating. That was a great, yeah. great play from Ricky. That's the only Street Fighter that does that, honestly. Yeah. it's, it's it, those, You get some pretty uh, interesting combos off that. You know yeah. what? I, I prefer it this way, Jocks, because I hate having my combos interrupted by stun <laughs> because I have no situational awareness. <laughs> But the lot, these guys definitely have quite a bit of situational awareness here to get this far into the bracket. Trying to get some of those jump-ins in there, whether he's committing to a jumping normal or trying to go low with the parry. That was dangerous and risky. Justin Wong's got himself a significant life lead here. Both meters on max. Oh, he's just so good at sniffing out those jumps with the air throw. There we go. Great parry into the stand fierce. So knowing exactly what to do after you catch the parry and being able to get that response in there, that's where the magic happens. So this is match point for Justin Wong. If he takes this round, he is looking at grand finals to defend his title. Stand medium kick into back fierce because we got pokes like that. And there he introduces a new tool, which is that back medium kick there. Probably 
I mean, aside from back fierce, it's situationally a really good anti-air that's able to get high arcing characters. What a parry! This time he caught him. He's like, you cannot keep doing that low strong like that and get away with it. This time Ricky was able to cut it. On the strongest situation, put him in the corner, but just like that. No, no one puts baby out. in a corner. <laughs> yeah. Just the long watch and 30 dancing there. And you can see with that dash under. He's going to be walking the doggy there. Back and forth. A right, little bit of a long leash. Oh, Ooh. connects. And this time, hey, he switched to Super Art too. Yeah, that's what I was saying. He switched it. He did, yeah. And you see it in full effect there. I mean, Hugo's not one of the easiest characters to hit and confirm that with because, you know, like like you were saying, you know, you want to minimize risk in some of these situations. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be so tough here. Is he going to chip him out? Does he want to do it? Does he want to do the Let's Go Justin? Oh, oh no, the low jab, anti-air. Kind of an anti-air. He goes and takes it. Felt he did empty there, and that was just absolute great neutral situational awareness and good use of the tools there, and both super arts as well from Justin Wong. Yeah, just great showing, and you know that's that's in part of the course here where we uh, expected with Jay Wong, but that's not the last of a big bad wolf that we're going to see. No, not the last Ricky either. And oh, in sorry, fact, I, I, I keep messing it up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I definitely flipped it there. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I try to remind myself: Big Bad Wolf is the black-haired one, <laughs> and Ricky's the Broly one. The so, Broly one. <laughs> so that's pretty much like our. How we're kind of doing that because, you know, they, they do that sometimes. When you got, like, two luchadors with similar masks on and you're like, who's who? And then you got the Spider-Man meme <laughs> with all that. But that was very entertaining. So coming up next as well is what we saw. You wanted more Remy. We're going to give you more Remy. You want to see some high-level good <clears throat> Remy on display. We're going to give it to you. We're going to give you some French guile. I wonder, you know, I wonder if Remy's got the French flags tattooed on his biceps. We <laughs> wonder about that. So it looks like, yeah, this is gonna be it. This is gonna be Everdread versus the Nam. Gen X versus Gen Z. <laughs> oh geez. You know, I gotta give it that, that pay-per-view billing, you know. Yeah, we gotta yeah, you do. We got we gotta save this out here, man, because this is like this is like you're watching Carlito against Ric Flair. Like oh, Everdread has been as historically been a strong third strike player. I mean, strong with Remy. He's learned a lot. He's played against the best, and he's teaching us in Miami how to be better players. And he's he's helped develop a lot of better third strike players. If you look at the bracket, who almost made third strike? There's a lot of people who've been practicing with Everdread who are getting in those names out there. But the Nom Seven, look at the prodigy going leverless on the cab, full of confidence here. Got his got his father Leo looking on in the background there. And you know, he also plays too. He's great, you know. You know, there's a there's a really good YouTube series, and I forgot who who. He's got to check his buttons first, by the way. Yeah. That explains the delays. I don't know who's the creator this, uh, of this video series, but it's like a video series of fighting games. It's like how bad are they really? And there's one on Remy that explains why he, you know he's definitely not the strongest character. You know, definitely not. Some yeah. of the things I was quoting, you know, he, like only one real cancelable normal. Does not. It's just like his tools and his stuff. It just doesn't compare to the other characters. But it's a really good series. I forgot who put it up. Man, I wonder what song choices these two players have. Because Everdread's got that. He's got that Phil Collins and the Air to Night energy. You feeling that? Oh, Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> My references are all so bad today. Do you want to know where I met the Dom 7? Do you want to know how I met him? How? He eliminated me in the top eight of Ultra Street Fighter 2. Not four, Ultra Street Fighter 2. <laughs> the GOAT. Great game. I love it. I Is that death. the one that's on Switch? Yes. Exclusive to Switch. Uh, he, had a he had a Shinokuma. I didn't even know Shinokuma was in the game. And he got into the top four, losing to uh, losing to Jerry Holtz, uh, Dalzen, <laughs> which, which was awesome. But his, his Shinokuma was putting on a clinic in the Ultra Street Fighter 2 at Evo. And that was like... And it was like, am I losing to Akuma? Or is this kid really like... That showdown. <laughs> and that dash up overhead goes to show it. He is fearless here. Oh, boy. Great confirms here. Oh, it's like clockwork. And look at that high stun there. But, I mean, just looks like a good hit to the kill. I don't know if he has experience playing against Remy, to be honest with you. Not many people do. Now, there were some Remy's um, in Seattle that in the tournament that were there. That and made it pretty far in the bracket, honestly. But I just don't know if the Nam had the opportunity to play against them. Or, but he takes the first round though, so. And I'm sure on Fike, you know, he he has some of the experience there. Yep, there you go. That's a juggle. I told you. 
You know, when you play these lower tier characters, you know, you have to convert off of everything to the to its maximum. Yep, you got to use those buttons the right way and really get the strength out of them. I like how he has that stand medium kick where he just kind of extends the knee out there. There we go. And gets that screen freeze. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, there we go. Great response from Everdread. Wake up throw. Enough to take it. Let us know what Street Fighter you prefer in the chat. You like the Gen X? You like the Gen Z? <laughs> I think I think they're all for the generation whoever's winning because um and and and, and Doug in Everdread here he's playing on the cap like he is just straight up that that's how he is he is yeah. all he's the versus city life oh but misses the flash kick the nom dashes up and goes with the business with the confirm off the state low forward oh universal head doom work yeah and super one is on deck that's gonna be the sonic boom fiesta. And he's going to take the first fight there. I mean, it's not really Sonic Boom Fiesta with Remy. It's more like Sonic Boom. I was trying to think of a French really really know know call it. I was trying to think of like a French culinary term, like like Sonic Boom Vichyssois or something. I don't know. I like it. I like it. Light of Justice. Yeah, we can just call it the Light of Justice. <laughs> I'm just going to do that. But how do we translate that in French? That would be like, oh, man. My French is off today. I'm sorry to all my French fans. Okay, here we go. And to be honest, I only spoke Canadian French, so it's, oh, it's different. But yeah, it's different. Oh, but and here we go. Repping the purple pants. He Everything. does a lot of the low sonic booms, so it kind of serves like the way that low tiger shot just kind of cuts off your legs and limits your movement. Oh, man, just this back and forth here, just chipping each other out. I love this level. I love when they push him into this side of the corner there. It's just that background just adds so much pressure to the situation. Yeah, my, <laughs> I feel more stressed out being sent to that corner than being sent to the other corner. Seizures, please. <laughs> okay, oh, there we go. It's you. Got the confirm off three lights. You love to see it. But now I'm taking a point of there. Yeah, very classic combo here, but let's see. You know, Everger looking kind of comfortable here despite losing that round. And it's tricky when you're dealing with, like, a good, strong projectile game in Third Strike because projectiles are usually considered weak. Wow, you see yes. how he's parried the EX there? Yeah, he's ready. Yeah, so he, do he does have practice because it takes – in this matchup because it does take a little bit of practice to understand, like, how to parry both those booms because it looks like one's hitting you high, one's hitting you low. So – but it's really kind of the – the block stun that you get into a parry that just allows for like those multiple directions. Oh. Wake up, Light of Justice only got one. Follows up with an EX though to get that damage guaranteed. Man, is that that sounds like a Captain America thing. Light of Justice. <laughs> okay, I want to see him say I can do this all day in French. <laughs> oh, good response there with the medium dragon punch and the step back low forward. The now I'm able to tie it up one one. And a modest applaud from the crowd there who appreciates the kid's skill on display. Gen Z standing up to Gen X. We got this. You know, there's more than 151 Pokemon, and I'm going to make sure you learn them. <laughs> and here we go into final game here. But Everdread staying cool, calm, and collected. I know, like, these lower tier characters, like, you know, they're definitely a huge fan favorite. So I know people are really wanting to see more of this Remy in action. I mean, they better. Because I'm tired of commentating third strike tournaments where we don't have a Remy. <laughs> and the people in the chat are like, when's Remy? Here's Remy, okay? <laughs> when's Remy? When's Alex? <laughs> when's Alex? Oh, boy. Uh, when's Q? Hey, I got some tea to share about Q, by the way. I'm going to tell you something that really triggered me a few weeks, months ago. Okay, and here we go. Speaking of trigger, he's triggering in the corner. Yeah, connects. he's been on point connecting with the flash kick after that throw since the first round. Yeah. Oh, no confirm? Low shorts, yeah. One that confirm. Instead goes with that low forward, so I guess he just didn't mash it enough. Sonic Boom again, whiff punishing that reach for the low forward. Oh, boy, he's got to eat the onion rings here. <laughs> I mean, they, they kind of look like... <laughs> they do! They do look like onion rings. The EX version especially, you know, he, he throws but a it's twofer. The, but it's the kind of... It jocks, it's the kind of onion rings that I don't like, like the real thin ones. <laughs> Oh, like, gosh. Where they don't have enough breading around it. I, I just, I'm not a fan. Oh, you know? they're chewy. Oh, yuck. Yuck, yeah. I, you and I both agree. 
Oh, boy. Oh, great uppercut uh, there. Yeah, the now I'm on match point here. I mean, and Evergrad down to 50%, so we're going to see how Doug's going to respond. Ooh. Oh, we got anti-air. Double anti-aired. And then the axe kick takes it. And the Nam overcoming Everdred there with a great comeback victory. Wow, the kid's got it going on. And he's advancing to the top four with this. Yeah. And I saw this kid getting top four in Ultra Street Fighter 4. I would not have imagined that he's also top four in third strike material. He's a beast. And he's taking people out in CVS 2 with a ratio of four Ken. I cannot stress that enough. Ratio of four Ken. <laughs> What? I have CVS2 machines in every arcade in South Florida. I grew up with CVS2 machines. You rarely see someone like doing numbers, doing work with Ratio 4 Ken, like he's bringing out with that Super Art 3 Ken, and he's staying on stage. You want more of the Nom 7? You're going to get more of the Nom 7. I think he's asking us to 3 out of 5. I believe it's going to be 2 out of 3. Here's this is 2 out of 3. I believe this is <laughs> Loser's Semis. Or is this Loser's Finals? No, this is Loser's Semis. Yeah, this is Loser's Semis because Ricky got, because Loser's, yeah. <laughs> so Ricky is waiting in Loser's Finals for the winner of this, yeah. Okay, young man, so here's your challenge. You're going to have to go through not just one Hugo, you have to go through two Hugos. <laughs> two Hugo ones. That's like one of those boss fights in like the early video games, like probably like first level of Golden Axe, the goat, where like you got those two like ball guys just next to each other, like, yo, this kid's facing the ultimate gatekeepers here, two good Hugos. Okay, let's see here. Oh. Oh, so, so it does look like we're going with the... Yeah, this is a bunch. Oh, oh, I was getting so hyped. I was like, we're seeing a Ken mirror. Okay. Yeah, we're going to see Big Bad Wolf stick <laughs> to his guns. I mean, and he wants it to. I mean, like, I know Big Bad Wolf has been hungry to make top eights at majors. I've seen him fight. I've seen him claw and scratch his way out of pools earlier. Just seeing him rise up the ranks and get this kind of excellence and... And he knows in his head that he believes that he could take that CEO title here. So, and you got you got to have that mindset here. This yep. is strong competition. We're just gonna reset this because we're playing on old school arcade machineware. You gotta love it, jocks. <laughs> I love how authentic, man. We got an authentic arcade experience here in Jabali Land, man. Not you can't say that about like all the majors and all the tournaments out there. Like, but we do it right in Jabali Land. But there's a hitbox there. How can it be authentic? But it's a versus city. It's connected to the versus city. So we get the best of both worlds now. So now people are able to play their controllers on real arcade hardware, on real arcade experience. No excuses. Let's get it going. Loser semifinals. The last two out of three set of the top eight here. The noms can. Oh, it's, yes. That's going to be an easy punish there. Yeah, and he just caught a big, bad command grab. Oh, he takes him out of the run with the throw into the corner there. I guess someone does put baby in the corner. Oh, that's that's one of the issues with Hugo. You're so big, you got to eat some of those ex tatsus in the air. Yeah, he crossed them up from full screen. I mean, the hurricane came from the Atlantic and it hit on the Gulf Coast. Oh, there's our first beat squasher landed on stream. Oh, oh there he goes like off it. that air to air. Great, great anti air chases him down. Another Kara throw after the dash up. Three shorts, no confirm. What? I mean, he's gonna need more than that too. Oh, he missed out on the parries there. Yeah, he's just trying to hold his space in here. He's just trying to protect himself here. He doesn't want to overexpose. Oh, that oh. low strong, nobody's home! And that's going to be an easy 360 for Big Bad Wolf. I love how all that furniture and toys just comes up off of the ground. <laughs> when all that stuff happens, man. This is a game that really makes you appreciate stages, level design, all those things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I just want to rub that into the faces of people who only play training stage and fighting games. Like, come on, man. Okay. And while Chris is over there rubbing, we're going to find out here <laughs> what the Big Bad Wolf can do. <laughs> yeah, he's dashing him down. Oh, oh got baby! Oh, he no! got the, oh, he had the hurricane shutters up! All the way to the last hit. I still love it, though. It's still hype. <laughs> Homeowners insurance, please. <laughs> Anyways, but, yeah, but great awareness by the non- Oh, walk-up 720? Don't get grabbed. Oh, oh man. And it's just going to be overkill there. <clears throat> I was about to say that, you know, despite that almost super hype moment there, the Nam still had the awareness to, you know, to, to juggle into the uppercut, but that didn't matter. Right. That didn't matter when you when you don't when you hold this walk up 720, and it was like the moment he dropped that last hit of the parry. I mean, you saw you saw some. I'm gonna say it, you saw some YSB stuff. 
So, I mean, like, let's just put it out there. You saw some co-op cup Yugo style parries there. It's a beautiful thing to see. Counters a sweep. Nope. Put that broom back in the closet. Ooh. You're going to get two claps. Hold oh. the applause and the encore. Oh, oh well, it's done. Oh, off the juggle. Yeah. He was one hit shy, Jax. Yeah, he was trying to get the, he was trying to get the cool combos. Oh, but and that one's going to get a stun. What? What? Oh, no, he missed the elbow drop. Oh, okay. Oh, man, Randy Savage was too distracted looking at Miss Elizabeth like, oh, no, just coming off the top. Nobody home. He almost... I mean, that was almost some mom spaghetti for the nom. The nom spaghetti. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got that one. <laughs> oh, there we go. Big Bow Wolf is on set point here. Yeah, parry to SPD. <laughs> Takes it. Yeah, it's, it's such a crucial skill to have as a Hugo player. Yeah, and he's got the kid in the corner there. He's like, no, you're going you're gonna to need a little... You're going to need a little more Sheng Long to stand a chance with that Dragon Punch. <laughs> oh, that jump fierce has such great range. And <laughs> damn it. <laughs> That thing hurt like some of the supers. Target oh. combo. He's going to need every inch of that extension to stay alive here. Oh, he sees oh, the axe kick. Oh, that's going to take it. Big bad wolf. He says, I got this. And this man, who like narrowly almost got into the winner's final. Ricky escaping him by the hair on the chinny chin chin. <laughs> I was about to say. I beat you to it. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I got to say, though, you know, guys, if you wanted more Hugo, you're getting more Hugo. You're getting more. You're getting all the Hugo. You're getting, oops, all the Hugo right there. We're pouring it out. We're, we're, like, getting rid of all the Captain Crunch out of the way, all the top tiers. We're going to get this rematch, this heavyweight run back. Let us know, Jabali Land, if you want to see Ricky and Big Bad Wolf run this back in Loser's Final because two out of three was not enough. Two out of three is not enough. We need the three out of five to get the job done. Let's go. Let's get hyped. This is the loser's final that we that we got to go out of our way for, baby. Yeah, there's there's going to be parries. There's going to be throws. There's there's going to be a lot of damage on the table. There we, might be some butt. There, there it might, might happen. Hey, you know, I'm might, a big fan. Maybe some walk-up 720s again. That's pretty sick. You know, I know you love those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're sick. I mean, you got, you got the tech here on all the points. I mean... I really love a lot of the pairing and the confirms off of the pairing that Big Bad Wolf has been doing. I yeah. mean, just absolutely amazing the, the tech that he put on against the Nam 7 to be able to cruise on into the final three of this tournament. But, but Ricky's got it going on. I mean, Ricky's got some great stuff. We saw some great tech. He was getting just long to change supers. Yeah. I mean, like, that, that's some cool stuff here. So we got, we got the Hugo Rific Losers Final. And you know what, Jax? The last time I saw Hugo, a Hugo Mir was actually I was in Wednesday Night Fights in a in Oakland, California in a Street Fighter 4 tournament and I saw a Hugo Mir and it was the most fun th one of the most fun things I ever saw. I think there was actually a Hugo Mir at one of the third uh, at uh, one of the top 8s here not that long ago. Oh, I got to find the vod. We got to get the vod, folks. So, everyone's sticking in the same colors here. Whoa. Big Bad Wolf has got the big black hair and Ricky is rocking that Broly look. You know, I want to say one thing, too. If Poison is orange hair, like, is that Poison with orange hair looking like Roxy, or is that just Roxy? My final fight lore is a little bit, a little, a little bit off, but Ricky's got it going on with that SPD. Final fight or not, this is just still the first game of the set here. Oh, oh the easy clap confirm. and the confirm! And look at that stun. It's racking up here. Oh, and he's eating his own he's version. He's like, I want to wake up, too. Clap for me, too. Come on. Where's my applause? Whips the command grab into that command grab. SPD City, baby. We got the sweeps, too. <laughs> They're <laughs> jumping in the air doing the same chops. A clothesline. It's not enough, but he needs to just get that knee in there. Man, and I was just laughing. Like, Hugo's with throw animation. It's just like, he looks like, he's like, what just happened? Like, his with throw animation. I love it. The whip went regular throw. So much situation. But with these two being so well-versed and so well-practiced in third strike... I mean, we see the situational awareness. It's almost like they know when things drop or don't work and are able to kind of regroup. Because sometimes, like, when things don't go your way, you scramble. You know, you do uncomfortable stuff. You, 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 you go with your gut instinct. But these guys are able to kind of keep it cool and play the situation in their favor. So if they're going to catch that draw four card in the Uno, they got some skips. They got some reverse. They got some stuff in the deck oh. to take it. Yeah, he's going for the headbutt there, which I call the reverse butt. It's like the opposite of the butt. 
And that's another overhead, too, if I'm correct in this game. It is, yeah. Oh, he's trying to anti-air with the backbreaker. Yeah, I believe it is. I, I believe it is. It also has great anti-air properties, which we just saw Big Bad Wolf use there. Oh, wake, wake up, up super again. That's, that's a little bit of an expensive cost there. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. And he doesn't get anything. It doesn't get much out of it. I think it was because Ricky may have been doing a, a probably a back dash at that situation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that's oh. the second time we've seen that sweep trade. Nope, nobody home in the meat squasher there. Change your diet. Oh, boy. And, you know, Hugo got very big by eating all the potatoes. Yes, that is lore. Cross up into the four jabs. Oh, he's going to go for this. He's trying to go for the stun. He's thirsty for the stun. Yeah, he's got the stun or the kill, and the stun will lead to the kill. Oh. <laughs> and he ends it with the butt there. I see you, Ricky. <clears throat> Throwing out my favorite button there. Taking it. Okay. So this is three out of five here, so... Am I the only one that's a fan of that button of Hugo's? It's, it's a good, I mean, it's it's risky, it's an overhead, and it, it has a good range, actually. It just reminds me of Naomi from WWE. <laughs> Formerly from WWE, but like that. Oh, is he changing supers? No, okay, we're not, okay. No, we're, we're going, we are going to hammer down as much as we can with a hammer friendly. I don't care if we're putting the star shape into the square blocks, Jocks. <laughs> okay. Keep hammering. Keep hammering this right, because that's what we're rocking here. Hey, you know what they say, man. When Hugo has all his tools, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> that's quite a statement. <laughs> and let's see here. Oh, stand, okay, stand, uh, stand short. Man, Ricky off to a great start. I mean, we saw how close the the last match went, the two out of three there, with, with Big Bad Wolf narrowly, narrowly getting that jumping splash there. Let's see if he can get that kind of comeback and extend the set a bit. Connects with the Hammer Frenzy there, great confirm. Oh, he's trying to grab him, it looked like. Yeah, grab or a parry or something, just not good. Big I mean, Bad Wolf is back in the set here. Oh, is that it? Oh, oh no. So close, because he's got that high HP. Takes him back there. Oh, they almost killed each other. Yeah, that was, that was a, a situation there that, you know, you have one, I have one. One hit to take it, and that's gonna put Ricky on match point with the full extension of the low forward. Big Bad Wolf is going to have to reach deep. Huffing and puffing. Yeah, and he, you know, I was, he was kind of feeling it there. Oh, oh, what? Through the clap. He got it like his house was made of straw. Okay, here we go. Ricky is in the corner. Oh, gosh, this is looking kind of tougher. Oh. The rare tech of this set. Ricky throwing some buttons there. Well, you better back off. This oh. is my round. I'm taking it. Hammer Friendly out there. Big Bad Wolf dropping back like he just kissed the express train. Oh, jeez. Wake, wake up SPD from that range still reaches? Oh, dangerous move. Taken to the skies for that anti-air throw, but Big Bad Wolf able to escape it. He's got a bit of a likely here. Oh, oh, got him there. That was the one he wishes. That was the one he wishes. That was the one that if it connected would have got him into the grand finals. So, so winner's final, sorry. But let's see how that can... Keep pushing it. Oh, wow. What a whip punish by Big Bad Wolf. I know he's breathing on. Getting a little closer. Low short. Another confirm. I got more in the toolbox for you, baby. What? Wow. Catches him there. With the backbreaker catching the dropkick? Yep. You thought that was safe. Oh, there we go. Uses the anti-air there. Switches sides. SPD not going to get the kill. HP too high. Oh, boy. We got super jumps. Yeah, this time kicks out of the splash at two. So still has a shred of life left. What are we going to see? With anything, we'll chip it out here. Ricky's on his last straw, you could say. We're starting to run out of the, the three little pigs puns here. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're at the back of the book now. We're at the back cover with the... <laughs> oh, wait, but he jumped, and he caught him. He caught him. You keep your feet on the floor, Mr. Big Bad Wolf. Gets one on the board, extending the loser's final. He's got himself a little bit of a group there, kind of cheering him on, trying to put together the comeback. Yeah, it's, it's possible. Like, he, got some third strike clicks, kind of like, you know, like, hey, man, this is our boy, man. Yeah, it, it, it's possible. You know, he's looking a little bit more uncomfortable as, as time goes on. Yeah, let's put some pressure on Ricky. Ricky's like, I need to make, I need to make that. So I need to get it closer. He's wiping his stick down, too. You can see that. Old that's that old school. You yeah, can see that's it. old school style there. You can see the players sweating on the stage, too. The pressure's thick. 
But Ricky's got himself a very decisive life lead there. Now, we saw in the last fight, Jocks, Ricky put on a great effort there, getting ahead of that life lead. Oh, wake up, SPD. Uh, yeah, that's really been working for Big Bad Wolf quite a bit, too. Yeah, definitely. Oh, into the confirm. Oh, that's a really in good In the confirm. corner. But wake up, sweep. Oh, sweep, sweep again. Sweep. You know, some Hugo players, they go two sweeps and then into the butt. That's like some degenerate stuff I've seen Hugo do. I mean, low, 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 high. Oh, and he hit, grabs him high with the with the backbreaker, and Ricky is on set point here. Yeah. Great Stan Fierce response to the whiff lariat. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, Hammer Frenzy got two hits out of it. That does a little bit of HP there. Oh, wow. Okay, a little bit of whiffs there. Yeah, nothing in the skies there. We got a red parry. I uh, got only got two jabs out of going Rojo. That sweep. It's it's, it's a strong button has such great range. Yeah, Ricky's walking him down here. Big Bad Wolf trying to get back on the life lead there. Jumping away, avoiding an empty jump. But Ricky not committing to the SPD. Just, oh, there you go, that meat squasher. He's like, you're gonna taste this paleo diet. Oh, Stan Fierce, what a comeback from Big Bad Wolf here. And the anti-air. Yeah, well, the crowd's fierce. Not no, the crowd doesn't want this match to end. No. The crowd does not want this. The crowd wants this to be the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Iron Man match at Gorilla Monsoon coming out, bringing out extended time. Oh, I tried to go for the meat squasher there. Ricky was able to sense that and stuff it with that good combo. That was an awesome three links there. Oh, oh he caught him with something. He said you had something up your sleeve there. I'll tell you that Hugo animate that whip throw animation is hilarious. It is. I like it. It's pretty. Oh, there we go. Hammer frenzy from Ricky. Ricky getting closer. Got him in the corner. One good confirm. Oh, can get Ricky to get to the grand finals. Oh no! Got him stunned. He's begging for mercy, and he finishes him off with the posterior, the rear view to send the big bad wolf pack in with third place. What an effort, too, man. What a match, dude. <laughs> And th third place, what a, what a great showing, man. Top three, we got two Hugos. I'll take it any day. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's just an honor to be able to call such a spectacular match like that and such just an amazing and great effort there. I mean, Big Bad Wolf, who came so close to winning the winner semis match, like just the splash beating that air-to-air -air backbreaker. And then from there, Ricky just came in strong, came in with the steam, went up 2-0, and said, you're going to you're gonna have to climb up. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to put in that work. And to see that happen and that extended match, I mean, we love that kind of stuff at Jabaliland. I mean, are you not entertained? Come on, we're going to be here all night with some awesomeness there. So this is the kind of fights that we need to set the tone and see what kind of stuff gets your bailey land popping out there. But, man, great form is Big Bad Wolf. I mean, third place is CEO. That's that's a flex. That's a good thing. Yeah, and I think that's still a medal, right? That's still a medal. Yep, still a medallion. And he, and he sent home the prodigy. Sent home the Nom 7, man. The kid there. So the kid was absolutely unstoppable in pools coming out there. And just, yeah. Just wrecking it. But Big Bad Wolf had good awareness there to kind of say, hey, I'm going to school your top tier with this. So we're going we're gonna to take this on. That was beautiful. So... We are just waiting for some things to clear up, and we are going to give you some really awesome grand finals action. Yeah, if I'm correct. But I, I really want to talk about how awesome this top eight has been. I mean, I, I really do, because the, the character variants, too. I mean, this is like, this is, you're seeing, you, you see Remy, two Hugos, mm -hmm. you know, and shout out to my boy Ray's almost making the top eight. I mean, he almost made the top eight with Sean. <laughs> that's, that's quite a yeah, feat. Losing to Ken in black, who had an excellent Makoto put on display there. So all that grappling, all those punishes, all and, and the most beautiful thing, too, what I love about when Third Strike is played at such a great level is you just see all these variant, all these amazing plays of excellent situational awareness that really shows you the things that you could get away with in Street Fighter in general. That's mm -hmm. what just makes it so awesome. And like I was, I was saying, um, it looks like we're just waiting a little bit. I think Justin Wong is still... Finishing in yeah, Street he's, he's taking care of some business because, you know, Justin Wong <laughs> getting his money's worth every weekend, yeah. you know, and, and, and he's the GOAT. I mean, like, he's the GOAT, so he should be able to take names on. And I can't tell you which exactly Street Fighter is being played, but, you I know. I think whether, ST right now. Yeah, whether it's that old. So have you ever played his – have you seen him in ST, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, he's – I played – I had the honor of playing against his um, his old Sagat up mm -hmm. in Seattle, and that was, that was a lot of fun. Like, 
I am never going to complain about anyone's fireballs ever again. But <laughs> once I've dealt with Justin Wong's uh, old Sagat. But let, let's let's look through some of this. So, like, <clears throat> running back to the top eight losers, like Dirty Llama's amazing Dudley. Yeah. That really came really came close. Had a very good lead against Ken and Black. But Ken and Black had, uh, I mean, Makoto's a robbery character. She will steal it and take it back, turn it on its head. Uh, but I want, And then also, like, we, we saw earlier with the Nam and Miguru, that was a really good back and forth with Yun and Ken. Really love seeing that. But I want to ask you, Jocks, what mm-hmm. match here on the bracket is, uh, what, what was the one that entertained you the most? I would say the one that entertained me the most um, was that first Hugo Mirror. Oh, the Ricky and Big Bad Wolf, the 2-1. Yeah, yeah the, 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 first, the first mirror. Yeah, there was some good stuff in that. But, I mean, the second match, too, but I, I just love the big man, right? I mean, it went down to the wire. And, I, like, to go to that finish, it could have gone either way. I mean, just with that situation that came, the back and forth, I love seeing stuff like that, you know? I got to say, the match that I also really like, like, deep down in, like, deep down in my heart is, uh, is Everdread against the Nam 7. Yeah. Was, I thought that generational <laughs> showdown there. My man Everdread with the master Remy, just uh, just sit, sitting up on the cab, yeah, you know, just chilling, and the kid hooking up his leverless, got his little snack box going on, connected to the cab, like the future's now, old man. And the future is that Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> and, and you know, I was interesting thing, like I was really thinking about it this weekend, just going, you know, going through all the setups in the main hall, like the amount of people that are now playing leverless, it's. It's a huge percentage. Like, you know, it was like kind it's of become sw- the norm. Yeah, it's really become the norm. And I, you know, I'm one of them myself. You know, I'm, I'm speaking with dirty hands here as a hitbox. Player when did myself. you convert to leverless? Like two years ago. Two years. Yeah, that's what most people <clears throat> did. And I feel that when when Daigo and the later on Tokido made the switch and Tokido becoming a full time Urian also with that. I think that's really what kind of pushed it over the edge because originally leverless was about. I mean, Leverless existed. Yeah. Like, and, and we mentioned it in Ultra Street Fighter 4. Yeah, Omega, Tom, Omega Hanks. Tom Hanks was Leverless back in 2014. Because I specifically remember, like, having my little Xbox 360 Femme Fatale, Mad Cats TE, and I'm looking over at Omega, like, what? You're playing me with a keyboard? And he's like, the future's now. We're like, you're wild, man. <laughs> Where's that jump button? The jump button's there? How do you put the jump? And, and it was just like that. But then. More people, like more and more, you'd see people come out of the woodwork. I'm a hitbox player. I'm I'm a snackbox player. I'm this type of player. <laughs> I, and the way it just came about, and it just became more and more present. But I feel like two years ago is really where now Leverless is more accustomed to amongst new players. Yeah. Than than the tried and true, Sanwa, Square Gate joystick that I'm still that I'm still rocking I'm still using because I'm the kid in the arcade man and it's weird it's like I really think that from what I was seeing that the lever list was actually outnumbering the sticks here yeah uh, that's yeah. that's what I was noticing and it's weird it's funny how times have really changed but that was just a big thing and you know it, it makes it so much easier when you have you know great products being created here we have a lot of you know really good vendors here oh yeah and yeah. and Arcade customizations, too. I yeah. mean, one of the things I always look forward to when traveling to tournaments <clears throat> is getting some mods in, like changing either the ball top, changing some buttons, either if you want it for more aesthetic, more comfort as a player, more precision, or if you're just looking for just a higher degree of customization. Yeah. That's what makes it, that, that's what makes it just really cool. And really, because what, what I tell people and what I tell people at the local arcade and people that I'm teaching to play and everything is that you got to understand that this is what I personally believe, that being a player is like your own personal journey yes and really everyone is going about their different directions and their different places as a player where they're evolving where they're going and that type of direction and it's like you see you see players plateau and make the climb you see it all the time and you see every year people either find their placement or they they set certain marks like for instance me in the later street fighter titles i went from the dream being getting out of pools and then flexing on everyone that i got out of pools to expecting to getting out of pools and then like if i if i don't make it i got my mom like why didn't you make it <laughs> so it was like it's and, and you know you don't play no video games or not like that but it's like you know they, they they see on social media they're just like hey where's the momentum where's the training did you learn you know so that's one thing that's great so because when you see like players like the nom come out come the mm-hmm. nom seven like we saw his ken come out of the woodwork i mean he's just playing so clean yeah like that ken looks like and plays like 25 years of of ken excellence mm-hmm. just seeing that on display i i absolutely love it man 
Yeah, and what I'm loving here is the great time I'm seeing everybody having here in Jabalia. And whether you're a spectator or you're on the sticks, the cabs itself, there's lots of choices to be had. If you guys are in the Central Florida area, I recommend just coming out last day is tomorrow. There's a lot of vendors here. If you've never tried any of these sticks, you've never it's tried worth it. It's yeah, worth it. If you've yeah. never tried an arcade stick, you never tried Leverless, we have great options to try. You know, there's booths you can try them out. There's lots of, you know, good, hey, good art too. But hey, don't. Let's not hate on the pad players either. Yeah, there's, there's not, really neither of us are pad players. So I I mean, actually, like, we got. Actually, I still have my pad with me because I still oh, play cool, pad cool. for Street Fighter Four. Oh, I, you do? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I was saying, um, I, I like the new Victrix pad. I thought the Victrix pad's really yeah. nice as well. And I also got to point out, like, because originally, like, I have issues with my thumb. My thumb flares up and aches a bit, like, because it's it's really me just being a Sega Genesis <laughs> player, and also which oh. had a great D pad by the way. Um, but really, it was a PlayStation One D pad, yeah, yeah. and just how hard I used to use it because I was never like taught or like you know practice in a specific way that was good for the health of my hand so i can't play fighters on pads for like more than like 30 minutes without my hand starting to flare up but i gotta say the victrix pad's really nice as well yeah. and also um my friend who i visited in orlando he got the 200 hundred dollar xbox controller have you seen that with the specialized d-pad try that on fighters yeah i'm telling you like i was able to really do some like top level damage in street fighter 6 with it so that's really where it rocks out but guys we got both fighters on stage here we got them ready to go. We got this thing set up. I know, I believe Justin is going to be on the cabinet. And Ricky, we saw him being able to wipe out, wipe down the top of his <coughs> stick there. And that's an old school stick there. That stick right there, the frame of that. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he's got some, probably got some Sanwas, got the JLF modded in there. But that is actually the Mad Cats SE. That was the stick that came out with Street Fighter 4, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, and there's also like a, what I like actually is there's a WWE All-Stars version of that one. Have you ever seen that one? No, I have not. Yeah, I've seen a player that has like, it's the same shape as Mad Cat's SE, but it's themed for WWE All-Stars, which actually is a fighting game and a pretty good one, to be honest. But without further ado, we're not going to delay this any further. We're going to go straight into it. Jabali Land, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, Grand Finals. Let's go. Jay Wong on the winner's side. Ricky on the loser's side. He's got to win three out of five to reset the bracket. Make some noise, y'all. Let's go. Okay, so let's see what Ricky can do. He's he, he's had some time to think between this and the last set and the last time he's played Justin. So. I like how he chased him down after that stop there. Like, you cannot get away for free. Yeah. But see, this is one of those levels where you got the obstruction in the view. You got the table, so you can't really see the low forwards or the low shorts. They kind of get obscured. Here we go. Hugo, almost a chameleon with the background there with the color choice. I know, right? Yeah, it totally does look like that. That is advantageous. I mean, I, I will honestly say the worst case of that, Jox, is in all, is in Street Fighter 4 Vanilla when people had, like, the red cost color outfit in the Volcano stage. Oh, they had to nerf that. Oh, boy. They had to nerf that at Super. Great anti-air from Justin Wong with that back forward. We saw him use that button later on in the set that we saw previously in Winner's Final. Yeah, I was just about to say, you know, speaking of... Um Good stuff there. Justin Wong with a great anti-air choice there. Looking strong, and here he is. First round here of Grand Finals. Yeah, and I want to point out that. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that is a great hit confirmed. Off of that Shining Wizard toward Roundhouse. Against the crouching opponents, you can mash the super and get it. And he says, no. No, no meat squasher for me. Uh-uh. I'm all plant-based here. Nope. Okay, and here we go. But that was great. I just want to point out, Jax. That was great awareness from the toward Roundhouse against the crouching opponent to a super. You love to see it. Or maybe you don't, because it's more Chun Li things. <laughs> yeah, more Chun Li things. Right? She has. She basically has just about everything. Uh, people like. People love this character because how she looks, her story, the cosplays are great. But in bracket, everyone's always like, "Ugh, Chun Li." Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. She's a monster in her own right here. But Justin Wong looking very very solid here. Yeah, he's trying to get a good poke there. Stand fierce to get the job done. I don't know if the stand. Oh yeah, the stand <laughs> medium kick. There we go. Got him. Stand medium kick into here. Yeah, Justin Wong is, and uh, you notice that uh, Jay Wong here is uh, is telling the Kikosho not not he's sending the Kikosho to the side. The Kikosho is in the bullpen. It's it's uh, it's he benched the Kikosho here because he's not playing with the theory. He thinks the super the super art two. And you know to be honest with you, in the last fight, he actually got more out of super art two than pretty much from the Kikosho, aside from those few really good whip punishes. Oh boy, let's see, let's see. Oh no, puts himself in the corner, but lands at SPD. Great round start for Ricky here. Yeah, he tried, just to try to walk under there, but that hitbox was just way too big. Oh, that stand medium punch. One of the, the good pokes of Hugo. And that's about as best as you can do sometimes, just parry into stand medium punch. That's some good blocking there from Wong. 
using one of those back fears. Build it up the meter. This time, Ricky catches it with a CM face of his own. So, yeah, Ricky looking good here. Let's just see if he can continue it. He's got the two bars, but Justin has the one bar, which I would actually say is even more dangerous than Hugo's two bars. Yeah, and, and a lot of times in grand finals, uh, players on the winner side, they tend to maybe, like, have a hypothesis they want to test or maybe some strategy that they could put a little risk to. They got a little room for error Ooh. and reward. Great confirm in from the clap. That was awesome. I mean, we, we saw in the last matchup, too, that, that Ricky and Big Bad Wolf, the stare down they had, they said, hey, whoever's going to win this is really going to be the one that does a better job with the Hammer Frenzy, really putting the Hammer Frenzy on notice. And we see it there. Ricky just awesome up in there. Okay. And Justin is as calm, and <clears throat> calm as a cucumber lime Gatorade. Yeah, he's looking. He, th that's just how he always looks. He just always looks so relaxed. It's just another day in the office for him. Yep. But we are tied 1 1 here. But Jay Wong is on the winner's side. So if he takes the two, he's going home. It's GG's. It's thank you for playing. Yeah. Oh, great start here. Yeah, using those low forwards as a poke. Doesn't have enough meter, obviously, to confirm anything out of it. But mixing that up with the Shining Wizard, oh, that back fierce. He's got himself a really good life lead here. Yeah, I think Ricky there is just missing out on a few parries and getting hit just a little bit off. Yeah, and Justin doing a good job of rushing. Also, Justin doing a very good job of rushing down, like just before um, Ricky is able to collect on getting that SA3 in the same place there. Caught the wall jump and got the parry. This time he was aware of the chase there, but the range of that clap too, oh, man. He's always so ready for that air throw. Oh. And that back forward, and, and that just goes back to what I was saying, like, a lot of people, like, look from the outside looking in, um, may say that, oh, there we go, there's that whip punish, whip punish, super R2, super jump cancel, one fierce, all right. I'm talking about Chun-Li's anti-airs, wait, wait, this, this is just good, this is too hype, I got it, let, let, let's stay on this, hold on. <laughs> Meet okay. Squasher, this time it works. And let, let's see, how can Jay Wong defend himself in the corner here? Oh, just pushing himself out, you know? It's not just, it's not like he's facing an almost eight foot person. Just walk him out of the corner. Yep, anti-air sweep into the air throw. Yeah, I mean, you just, what just, Justin is literally using six, five to six. Does it? Yes, off of the low strong. Super Art 2 takes it up 2-1. And, and this is where I'm going to get into a uh, little, the tangent I wanted to go on earlier. Now, a lot of people from the outside looking in uh, may question Chun-Li's usage of anti-airs because she doesn't exactly have a universal option per se, like a dragon yeah. punch or anything. But if you have good situational awareness and understand like how all of Chun-Li's tools can anti-air in this situation, back forward, sweep kick, low, low medium punch, back fierce, um, Kikosho, which he's not working with right now, um, and then air throw. See, those different options. If you yeah. have the, and the close standing roundhouse kick, which is like, it's really hard to get to air the proximity normal jocks. I'm sure you were aware of that yeah, as yeah, well yeah. as an ultra SF4 player, yeah. I'm just trying to bait something out. But that's the thing. You do have all those variants of the anti-airs. I mean, Matt, jack of all trades, master of none. But when you really understand the spacing of the neutral of this character, like, and you put all those tools together, you can actually put together a very competent, if not serviceable, anti-air game, which I'm late. Yeah. Oh, come on. You're acting like she has some sort of weakness. <laughs> of course she doesn't. <laughs> okay. But I'm just saying she doesn't really have anti-airs in, in Street Fighter 4, honestly. Okay. So here we go. Let's see what Ricky can do. Like, that's one where you got to walk underneath the opponent's with. Uh, this is just great display of neutral. Just keeping him out. Yep. Oh, yeah. Geez. Jay Wong is the master of playing that lame game, and he'll tell you that himself. And you know, Jocks, you could you, you see you see the difference here when when Wong started stopped relying on Kikosho to try to get those anti airs and then using those other situational ones. Low forward there, got him just underneath the table there to check him. And this is tournament point for Justin Wong. Yeah, can he close out the grand finals on the winner's side, Jocks? I mean, not not to to sound very conventional, but I mean, Justin was definitely the the favorite here, but he's. It's it's trying, it's showing true point here. Just how strong he's been playing, but you know Ricky is not a slouch either. No, Ricky had an excellent performance in this top eight bracket. Yeah, yeah. and really, especially uh, as try, as shown by his adaptations against Big Bad Wolf. Yeah, and really able to take that on. Oh, oh there we go, SPD City. This could be the start. It could be, yeah. Because all he needs is just a few of those, and you're looking at a bracket reset. Yeah. Oh. oh no, no meat squasher. 
Man, his reactions are so good just to jump out of that. Justin's like, sorry, I want the pancakes and the so and the and the eggs, no sausage. No meat squash. Plant based. Okay, so Ricky tr trying to pick his spots here. Yeah, three instances of Justin Wong using the stand medium kick there. That's a very safe poke. Usually when they go for that, they're just looking to just be able to have some safe pressure and stand their ground. Okay, time is running down here. Oh, it gets that's like the twelfth air throw I've seen from Jay Wong today. I mean he's yeah, he's he's I I my theory is is oh that oh, he super jump canceled the wrong way. He super jump canceled and jumped backwards. I don't know if he that was intentional or not, because that, that cancel would have got the super R2, because that super R2 does the most damage. Yeah. Like that's the optimal damage for Chun Li's Super R2. Okay. But that was a good that was a good round there from Ricky. Both characters with max bar here. Now, what I was saying is Justin using that air throw there, um, it's the supplement for the absence of the Kiko show. So he, he's been just going for that situation awareness. Okay. Let's see. If both characters at their max damage. So, oh, potential Great air here. parry. And earlier, he was using that air splash to finally stuff one of uh, Justin's air throws, which has been very dominant in this match. Okay. But he, the, that low forward is something he's going to have to watch out for. Oh, no, that was the input error there, the down forward roundhouse with nobody home. Ricky takes advantage of that with a standard throw, and he's walking He's walking Justin down. Meat squasher, that would have tied it. Oh, just taking the throw, that's fine. Yeah, Justin is a very scary player to put you in the corner. Yeah, because it's good. One crouching medium kick from chun -Li can almost take it here. And he uses those boots to keep her out. But you don't want to show your cards. Oh, he could have got the double clap there, thinking the air air juggle. If that's going to chip. Oh, oh, let's go, Justin. Let's go, Justin. <laughs> oh. oh, goes to air to air. Yes, gets no, two no, stops no. there. Oh. oh. And he gets hit oh. in the air. Yo, he stopped the meat squasher. Justin Wong putting a stop to Ricky's momentum there, closing it out with an anti-air clinic. The man, the legend, the defending champion, Justin Wong, holds it down going back to back as your CEO 2023 Third Strike Champion. Man, that's just awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was a, that was definitely a good ending. It's so funny, you know, to see the, the whole let's go Justin meme, but on the other side. On the other side, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. like, I mean, hey, can, can, we call that, can we call that CEO moment? CEO moment number 6,337. Yeah, that was a good one. I mean, right there. I mean, we, got, we got a road right there with that conclusion. Just taking every single stop. I mean, just, just taking the hammer friends lead. Like, nope, nope, nope. Just put that hammer down. And then the stomp against the meat squasher, man. That's the finish that I like. Yeah. But, but man, I just got to still say, great showing by the top eight. Like, to the competitors that came here, they put in the work and just lots of great shows. Can I get top eight to the stage, please? If you made top eight and third strike to the stage, yeah. please. Yeah, let's get to the stage here. Let, let's show off these great players. And I want to point out too, Jocks, like what really makes it excited is you saw a lot of the tried and true, the legendary faces, the old faces, some of the veterans who never gave up and dedicated themselves every day of every year to improving to make it to this stage. And then you got the new faces. You got the Gen Z kids pushing new technology, pushing new things, pushing new boundaries to set the future of this game, the fight for the future literally itself on third strike. This was just an honor to commentate the top eight, an honor to be a part of it, Jocks. Oh. I absolutely absolutely love it so let's take it to the stage to this medal ceremony of all these much much deserving players right back, out sorry. there let's get it honored i'm running two things at once i mean really just all these different players coming from different backgrounds mm -hmm. jocks. it's awesome man all right i am sorry about that Justin doesn't want to play his Super Turbo matches. <laughs> All right, I am back. How have you guys been enjoying Jabali Land this year? Awesome. Thank you, as always, guys, for supporting. Love me some Third Strike. I don't know if you remember, I won a match over at Co-op Cup in Japan a few months ago, so very proud of that. But anyways, and then this kid on the ch cheat box beat me earlier. <laughs> and with that, let's give out the awards. In seventh place, give it up to Miguru. That one's Migator. Also in seventh place, give it up to Dada's very own Dirty Llama. I 
I know you. In fifth place, give it up to Kenan Black. Also in fifth place, give it up to Everdread. In fourth place, honestly, this kid's the future, man. He's been kicking ass this weekend. Give it up to the non seven. Uh, only flight sticks are allowed at our next retro tournament, just a heads up. In third place, give it up to Big Bad Wolf MN. In second place, give it up to Ricky. And your third strike. How many times are that now here? Okay. First, did he, you won last year too? God. Can you just keep that belt and I can give this to someone else? No? Anyways, give it up to your third strike, CO 2023 champion, Justin Wong. A face he had of modern Zangief. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I'll tell you commentators when you can talk. Okay, you guys are set. Thank you. Just awesome. I mean, like, players from different backgrounds and different things. So, mm -hmm. back to us. I just wanted to say, Justin holding that belt, nice drip, by the way. He, he, he had that modern Zangief face he looked at where he's like, oh, no, I'm in the corner. What am I going to do? If you guys saw that clip on Twitter and YouTube, it's hilarious. Just another great Justin.